Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll continue with episode 2 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode, we'll be covering what the main function is in C++, and we'll go over the Hello World program that we created in the last episode so we can better understand our very first program. Alright, so what I have here in front of me is the Hello World program that we created and compiled and even ran in the last video. So let's first talk about the main function. You might be asking, what is main? What does it do? Why is it here? And why is it significant? Well, in order to understand main, you have to understand what C++ does with main. Main is a special function here in C++ where the beginning of every C++ program starts in. So you can imagine that every single C++ program has a main function, and that's the very first place that gets executed, well at least the statements inside of main get executed, at the very beginning of when you run your program. So the most basic way to write main is to type int main with an open and close parenthesis, followed by curly braces, and that's really it. This right here is considered the main function. Now there are two types of main functions. This by itself is probably used the most, Basically, there's no input from the user with this one, and it only returns one thing. Another important part would be return some number. Zero just means that things were returned successfully. So if I do return zero, this means everything was successful if it gets to this point in the main function. But we'll talk about this at a later date, don't worry about it. And we'll also talk about int or integers in another video as well. Just know that the main function is what the compiler will search for as the main point of execution in any C++ program. All right, we'll take a look at Hello World here in a moment. All right, we'll take a look at Hello World in a moment, but until then, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and just show you that this can run as well. So if I save things here, Control S, I'm going to launch a terminal real quick and rerun what we ran yesterday. And to do so, I'm just going to recompile my program, just like we did yesterday, and run it. As you can see, nothing happened here, but we didn't get any errors during the compilation process, as well as running main. Well, the reason being is because there aren't any statements in here besides this return zero, and the main function is not going to tell us anything, but the actual C++ program ran successfully. All right, so what would happen if we didn't have main here? So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this entire function, and let's go ahead and run this instead. I'm going to make sure to go ahead and save, and then I'm going to compile here back in the terminal, and now we got some sort of an error. Well, this might look like gibberish right now, and it pretty much is, but here it makes note of something very specific. It says undefined reference to main. So the compiler is looking for main, and it cannot find it inside of the C++ program. Therefore, it exits with an error because it failed to compile the program. All right, so just know it's very important to go ahead and have a main function in your program. Also, if you want to keep up with this series and support the channel, please make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more C++ videos and to be able to follow along with the series as new videos come out. All right, the other mention I wanna make is I'm going to go ahead and paste back in that code that we had earlier with Hello World. And before we use this, I wanna show you another type of main function. So you might think that the normal skeleton here for main is this int main with the parentheses and the curly braces, but there's actually a second form of main, which I'm going to write right below. The other one is int main, again with parentheses, but inside the parentheses, we can have a few things located in here, which we'll talk about in the future, but let's not get overloaded right at the beginning. I'm just going to show you that they exist and that a second type of main function exists in C++. So here it's gonna say int arg c, and then I'm going to do something char, with a star here, as they call it, or an asterisk. And this one is argv, and this closed and open bracket. All right, and following that, we also have the curly braces, just like before. And I'm going to add in the return zero. So this looks quite a bit different between the two. And we're not gonna focus on what this means exactly. We'll just know that there's two forms of the main function. And at a later date, we'll go ahead and review 
what all this inside actually means. That way, if you ever see the main function written in one of these two forms, you're aware that the second one is a valid main function. Let's go ahead and make sure that's the case by running it. So I'm going to delete this one and then rerun this. So make sure to save it, open up my terminal, compile, no errors this time, and run main. All right, so it successfully ran, and since we didn't have anything inside of here, the program didn't really do anything besides this magic return zero. All right, awesome. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out, and it helps support the channel. So now that you're aware of the two main functions, let's go back to our original main function that we created with a couple statements inside of it and talk about what it does. So this is our original main function and we'll talk about all these things in depth later, but I just want to run through this entire program here with you and what's actually going on here and what these things all mean. All right, on the first line, we're actually, as it says, including something. So if we put a hashtag and we type include, that includes some type of a file and or library that we want here in C++. We'll talk about this in more depth in the future, but IOStream references a specific subset of libraries located inside of the standard library and stands for input output stream. What input output stream allows us to do is it allows us to use a function like see out, which will type something to the screen and we'll get to when we get to that line. So next to using namespace STD using namespace just tells the compiler that you want to use a specific library here in this current scope of this program and we'll go into namespaces in the future but this one's calling out STD which just stands for the standard library. The reason we do this is if we didn't have this portion let's go ahead and run it just to see what will happen. So I recompiled and what happened is it says error C out was not declared in the scope. Did you mean std colon colon c out well that's because the compiler doesn't recognize what c out function you want to use because it belongs to a specific library and if you don't mention that specific library by doing something like this std colon colon the compiler won't recognize things so if i save this and rerun this time we get hello world because it successfully compiled but that does look a little bit different than what we had used before. And that's because this namespace makes it a lot easier for us to go ahead and call the cout function multiple times. So what I can do is if I just copied this hello world and I just kept spamming it and spamming it and spamming it, I don't have to type that annoying STD in front of every single one of these. Instead, hello world would be printed one by one in this program. So if I try again and run the program, you can see hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world. Awesome. Going back to our program, going to get rid of these few extra ones. Now that we understand what STD is doing, we've already talked about int main. So anything that exists inside these curly braces is what's going to get ran very first by the program because this is the first place in main that the program starts. So let's talk about cout. Cout is a function of this standard library, specifically part of the IO stream portion, and it allows you to type stuff out to a console. So like you saw before, it's typing stuff out to a console here, and that's all it does for you. The two less than symbols means whatever's to the right hand side of the less than symbols, go ahead and put it out to the console. Following that, hello world is written in here, but there are parentheses and all the parentheses to note are that this entire thing is a string of characters, is that this entire thing between the parentheses is now considered a string. We'll talk about strings later, but just know that at the basic form of a string, it's just some text. And then over here is a semicolon. And what you'll notice very quickly is a semicolon ends any statement in C++ and then finally, we have return zero. All this does is return something out of the program to know whether or not you successfully ran the program and it actually got to this point. Well, I think that's enough. We've learned quite a bit today about the main function as well as how our first program functioned. If you need help setting up your environment, 
to go ahead and compile this stuff like I have been in here and running the program. Make sure to watch the first episode in the series. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.